Hey there, smart home enthusiasts. On today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a few products that will not only make your home safer, but add some extra conveniences as well. Today, we're diving into the world of Yolink's Smart Garage Collection. These devices should be able to cover almost every garage door opener that's out there right now. And as always, we have timestamps if you wanna skip around, or you can use the chapters in the video description down below. So we're gonna start by looking at the products in the Yolink Smart Garage series and how to select the right one for your home. So let's get started. Now Yolink offers two different styles of garage controllers, the wired garage controller and the Yolink finger. For both of these, you will need a Yolink hub and because everything Yolink runs on LoRa technology, you can have up to a thousand feet between your garage controller and your hub which is great for folks that have outbuildings or barns where you wanna be able to monitor and manage those garage doors. So first, let's start with the garage door controller. This method works for older, non-smart garage doors. This solution is the most rock solid and least expensive. This controller is wired in parallel with your existing garage door button and interfaces with one of our sensors that detect the door's status. The second option is the finger controller. This battery powered device will press your existing garage door button opening and closing your garage door. Like the other controller, it does use one of our door sensors to detect which state the garage door is in. Now this is the easiest and quickest way to control your garage door. It's also the best option if you have a newer garage door opener or an existing smart door opener. Now you might be asking, why if I already have a smart garage opener, do I need one of these? Well, maybe your current opener is a closed system that wants to charge you a monthly fee to use basic services like Google or Amazon Voice Assistant. Or maybe you just wanna tie everything into your existing Yolink environment. Now, if you're still confused if your current opener is compatible with the controller or the finger, here in the next section, we'll show you a good way of testing this. Now for the other half of the equation for the garage door opener system is the sensor. Now for most people, the garage door sensor is gonna fit this bill. It is a tilt style sensor that's intended to be secured directly to the inside of your garage door towards the top corner. So as soon as the garage door opens and the top part of the garage door starts to turn flat, the sensor will signal that it's open. Now, if you have a door that this was not gonna work for, like a roll-up style door, you can use one of Yolink's door and window sensors. Alternatively, if you need to mount the sensor in an area that could get wet, you can also use the outdoor contact sensor. However, for most folks, the garage door sensor will work great. Now, if you have questions on which sensor is right, check out our support page at yosmart.com support. Now, we have a simple method that we think is the easiest way to determine which controller you need to use for your existing garage door opener. For this test, we're gonna need a ladder and a humble paperclip. Now, if you don't happen to have a paperclip on hand, then a tiny bit of small gauge wire or even a twist tie will work just fine. Now, if you're using a paperclip, let's make sure it's a bare metal style, not one of those fancy coated ones. We will then need to unfold the clip and make a U shape with about a half an inch between the two ends. If you're using a wire or a twist tie, we'll need to strip away about an inch of insulation from each tip. Now we can get started on our test. First, we're gonna place our ladder under our existing opener and carefully climb up to a comfortable position behind the opener. This is where the wires are gonna be coming in. Make sure the garage door is clear of any obstructions and your ladder is in a safe position that will not be affected by the door opening or closing. You might need to remove or move the light diffuser or guard out of the way. Next, visually trace the wires from your opener button back to the opener. It'll typically land in a set of terminals like this. These are called push-in terminals, but you might also see screw-in terminals. Now typically, there'll be four terminals on the back of the opener, two for the button and two for your safety beam. Once you find where the button wires land, we're going to insert our paper clip or wire between these two terminals. This should act like pressing the button on the wall of your garage. Now when you insert the paper clip or wire, your garage door opens or closes, then congratulations, you can go ahead and use the hardwired garage door controller. But if your opener doesn't immediately open or close, then double check that you're on the right terminals. However, if it still doesn't work, then you'll most likely need to use the Yolink finger to operate the opener. Now as an example of an opener that doesn't work, you can see this brand of opener, an error code flashes on the back of the unit. Looking this up indicates that the opener thinks that there is a problem and it won't respond to this type of input. All right, now that we know which controller type is the right one for us, let's get them installed. All right, so let's move on to installation, starting with our garage door controller. Now, when we open the box, we'll see what's included. The controller itself, the connection wire, 
a USB-A to bare wire cable, a USB-A power supply, and a quick start guide. Now we're gonna need a couple of tools for this as well. We'll need a small flathead screwdriver and a ladder. Now before we get up on the ladder and start the installation, let's get the controller added to your YoLink hub. If you haven't already set up your YoLink hub, we've got a great tutorial video right up here. Now to pair your device to your hub, we open the YoLink app and press the scanner button at the top right hand corner. Then we're gonna scan the QR code that's on the front of the controller. Now on this first screen, you can always customize the name and the room for your controller. You can also click the heart to add it as a favorite. Now on the next screen, if you get a yellow triangle, don't be concerned. This is just indicating that the hub cannot see the controller, but of course we haven't given it power yet. The next step is to determine where you want to install the controller. The controller needs to be powered via the USB cable, so of course you're gonna need power close by to where you install it. Most likely the best installation location will be close to the opener itself because there's always power in that location. But you can place the controller by the button if you do have power there. For today's example, we're going to install this one next to our opener. So next, we're gonna take the connection wire that came in the box and remove the pre-cut insulation. You might wanna give it a quick twist to keep everything straight. Now go ahead and climb up on the ladder and we're gonna be inserting the wire into the same terminal as the existing button we tested in the last step. For push-in style terminals, you'll need to take your screwdriver and press the button in. Then you can insert the new wire next to the existing wire in the terminal. If you do have issues getting it all to fit or to maintain a good connection, then remove one side of the existing and new wire from the terminal, give it a twist with a pair of pliers or your fingers, and then reinsert the wire back into the terminal while pressing the button. Now remember to do this one wire at a time so things don't get confused. Once you have both sets of wires installed in each terminal, it's time to connect the YoLink controller. To do this, we just need to take the other end of the new wire, remove the insulation, and install it into the two terminals labeled relay or signal. The order here does not matter. Now we need to power up our controller. We need to take the USB power cable included in the box and connect it to the DC terminals. Now make sure you connect the red wire to the five volt DC plus terminal and the black wire to the five volt minus terminal. Now just plug the USB cable into the provided power supply and connect that to your wall outlet. After giving the controller a few seconds to start up, press the set button and the light should blink red twice and then green twice. You're now connected to your hub. Now time for the fun part. Let's get it tested. Now to test if the controller is properly connected to your garage door opener, first verify that both the garage door and the garage door opener paths are clear. Make sure you didn't accidentally lay any wire on the garage door opener chain or belt. Once you're sure everything is clear, press the O slash C button. This is the manual open and close button. The opener should start to open or close. If that works, then great, you're almost done. If it didn't work, no worries, just go back and make sure your wires are secured in the terminals and something didn't slip out. Finally, using the included 3M double-sided tape, secure your controller to your garage ceiling, wall, or the side of your opener. Make sure you secure your wires so there's no chance of something getting pulled out of the opener. Now you can test opening and closing the garage door in the YoLink app. You may notice a message that pops up indicating that because you have no sensor attached, you cannot tell if the door is open or closed. Not to worry, we'll install the sensor in the next step. Now for the other approach for controlling your garage door, we can use the YoLink finger. First, let's get the finger out of the box and get it paired. Once we open the box, we'll see it includes a YoLink finger controller and a quick start guide. Like most battery powered YoLink devices, the finger comes with two AA batteries pre-installed. Now to pair the YoLink finger, we just have to open up our YoLink app, press on the scanner button at the top right hand corner, then scan the QR code on the front of the finger. Again, you can customize the name of the device, its room, and mark it as a favorite. After moving on to the next screen, you'll get a confirmation that the device has been paired. Now we can press the set button at the top of the finger to wake it up and complete the connection. Now that we're paired, let's install it. Now installing is a snap. You can install the finger in any orientation that you need, but in this case, we're gonna install it just to the right of the button. We just need to make sure that the finger can cleanly press the button. We recommend testing the finger by either holding it right next to the button and then activating it from the app or securing it temporarily with something like painter's tape. Once you apply the double-sided tape to the wall, it will be difficult to remove. So you better try a few times to make sure that this location works. Once you're happy with the location, now we can remove the backing and permanently install the finger next to the button. Now, just like the Yolink garage controller, you will get a message in the app because we haven't installed a sensor yet. Now, one thing you may notice on the front of the Yolink finger is an up and down button. 
This allows you to set the starting position of the finger to accommodate different button sizes. So use this to customize the finger location for your instance. For this last installation section, now that we've got our chosen garage door controller installed, let's go ahead and set up our sensor. So for this section, we're gonna only cover setting up the garage door sensor. However, if you need help pairing or configuring the standard door and window or outdoor door sensor, then please see our support site at yosmart.com support. Now let's get the garage door sensor installed. So the first thing we need to do is pair the sensor to the app. So again, we just have to open the Yolink app, press on the scanner button in the top right hand corner and scan the QR code on the front of the sensor. Again, we can customize the name and the room and click the heart button to add it as a favorite. After going to the next screen, you'll get a confirmation the device has been paired, but we need to press the set button at the top of the sensor to wake it up and complete our connection. Once it's been set up, we probably wanna go ahead and test it in the app. So to do that, we can just hold the sensor up where you can see the front face of the sensor flat. The sensor should show closed in the app. Then if we rotate it where the face is down, the garage door should be showing open in the app. If you rotate it backwards, you'll probably get an error message because this is not a valid state. So as long as you're able to change it from open to close, then you know everything is working fine. For the final step, we need to mount the sensor. Start by removing the backing from the adhesive pad, then attach the sensor to a clean section of your door. We recommend towards the top. Make sure that the sensor is parallel with the top and bottom of the door. So now that we have our device set up, let's jump into the app and go over how to configure everything. So if you follow the instructions while setting up the app, you may be prompted to go ahead and bind your sensor to your opener. So if you see a single device on your screen, then you're good to go. If you see two devices on your screen, then we'll need to associate the sensor with our garage door. You'll know you need to complete this because there's a question mark on your garage door controller. So we can click on the garage door controller, then click the three dots in the top right hand corner and go down to sensor. Then we need to click pair with. Now, this will show any compatible device in your Yolink environment, but we're gonna select our garage door sensor. Then we're gonna click the check mark and then go back to the home screen. Now you'll see you have one tile to represent both of your devices. Now you'll notice on the tile, it will change status depending on if the door is open or closed by having a green door if it's closed, or you'll see a red opening if it's open. Now to open your garage door, all you have to do is press the two right arrows in the bottom right hand corner and then you should see that the door is opening and it should show open in the app once it reaches that particular point. Again, you can press the two down arrows to close it. Now, one quick thing to note, if you do want to control this with an automation system like Home Assistant, Google, or Alexa, we need to make one quick security tweak. You click on the three lines in the top left-hand corner and go to settings. We, on our main account settings, we need to click on account and then advanced settings at the bottom. At the very bottom, you'll notice control of security devices. This allows you to control security devices in smart for automations or using an outside third-party service. So things like locks and garage doors, you need to turn this on as a safety feature. So you make sure that that option is selected on. Now when you ride an automation, you'll be able to tell the garage door to open or close using the smart automations in the Yolink app. So quickly to go through the settings for the garage door controller, we'll click on the garage door controller. And in this screen, you'll see a battery status for the sensor if you're using the hardwired garage door controller, you won't see a battery status for it because it's powered off of AC mains. But if you are using the finger, you'll notice there'll be a separate battery here for the finger. You have a big open or close button depending on which status it's in. And then at the bottom, we can access history to see when the door was last opened or closed. Next, we can hit the three dots in the top right hand corner to go into the options. So from here, you can customize the name of your controller. You can assign it to a room. You can also select whether it's a favorite by clicking the heart down at the bottom. Below the room, we'll see two options, alert and open reminder. Alert is a notification every time the garage door is either open, closed, or either way. So if we click on the alert section, we have four options here. Don't alert, alert if opened, alert if closed, or alert if open or closed. So depending on how you have this set, you'll get a notification every time your door is opened or closed. Now, if you are like me and you forget to close your garage door a lot when you come in with groceries, then you might wanna set up a reminder. So we click on open reminder, we can select a time to get an initial notification that we left our garage door open. So we can select a number of hours up to two or a number of minutes or seconds. This is the initial notification if the garage door has been left open for this period of time. Now, if you'd like to have a notification for a set period 
as long as that door is left open, that's where the bottom section comes in. On here, you can select a continuous alarm, which will send you a notification for whatever amount of time you have set down in here. So if you set it for 30 minutes, you'll get an alert every 30 minutes while your garage door is open after the initial period set at the top. And of course, you can disable this by clicking the button in the top right hand corner. So again, this is a great option if you happen to be a person who leaves your door open after working in the garage or bringing in something like groceries. So below that, we have our standard access to history like we do on the home screen. And we can see the current state of the garage door. Finally, the last option in this section is to change the sensor associated with our garage door. You can again select from any door window sensor, outdoor contact, or garage door sensor in case you wanna change things up in the future. Then finally below that, we have all of our technical information including signal strength and firmware. Now, if there is a firmware update available, you can, you'll can you get a small notification down here where you can click on it to update the firmware of either device. This is great for any security enhancements or feature updates in the future. And of course, at the bottom, we can click delete. Please note, if you click delete here, it will delete both the garage door controller and the sensor. If you did want to break up the pairing between the two devices, all you have to do is click on sensor and click disable pairing. Then you'll have two separate devices. But please note, the system is designed to have these two combined together. Only do this if you're running into problems with the system. Now, if we click on the Smart tab at the bottom, we can set up different scenes and automations. This will allow you to set up things like having a light turn on when the garage door is opened, or open a garage door at a particular time of the day. This is very helpful for closing your garage door at a specific time, just in case you left it open. For more information on scenes and automations, check out our support site at yosmart.com support. There you have it, a simple and reliable smart garage setup using YoLink's family of smart garage products. YoLink's smart garage collection offers convenient and affordable options for monitoring and controlling your garage door or powered gate. With two different styles of garage door controllers, the hardwired garage controller and the YoLink finger, along with a variety of sensors to choose from, you'll be able to find the perfect setup for your home. Now, if you need more support or advice on your smart garage setup, you can visit our support page at yosmart.com support. Or don't hesitate to reach out to our support team at service at yosmart.com. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned for more smart home tutorials from Yolink.